For a long time now, I've used clip-on lenses just like this to get creative with my smartphone photography. We're talking about macro lenses or fisheye lenses, even telephoto or polarizing lenses. But in one pack of smartphone lenses that I picked up recently, there was a new sort of lens that I haven't played with before. That is a kaleidoscope lens. So how about we experiment with some kaleidoscope camera action. So clip-on lenses. I think we all know pretty much how they work by now. You've got the clip that attaches to one of the lenses on the back of the phone and uh, very often you will screw in the lens of your choice in a little kit like this that are very very cheap and readily available online. Uh, you might get any number of different lenses in there. And uh, this lens here, this is a six uh, element, six prism, I guess, kaleidoscope lens. Um, we'll see what that means in just a moment, but you can rotate it around. And I mean, I think back to kaleidoscopes that I had when I was a child, you would kind of look through this uh, contraption, a bit like a small telescope or a, a monocular or, or something like that, twisted around and you would get different colours and, and all sorts of fun things. That's what I'm hoping we're going to get from this as well. So, first thing to do, uh, and it's, it's an easy thing to overlook actually, is, you usually get a little cleaning cloth in these kits, so make sure you give your lenses on your phone bit of a wipe because you know these are in our pockets in our hands all the time and they can uh, accumulate bits of gunk that can really really affect your image make it look all soft you can start to get streaks over your image as well so just give that a little bit of a clean and also frankly give your lens a bit of a clean as well just a, a light brush on top and on the on the other side as well no need to go too crazy, but I think that'll do the job. Right, the next thing is, now, smartphones these days in particular have got multiple lenses on the back of them, and you don't always know which one is which. So when you're attaching your clip-on lens, it's a good idea just to identify which one of the lenses you're going to attach it to. So just by opening up the camera app on here and go to which lens I think I want to use and it's the two times lens here and then just by running my finger not touching but just by running my finger along where the lenses are I should be able to identify which one of the lenses is the right one and I think it's this one on this phone in the middle yeah okay so when I run it across the top one it's not in the way of the image same with the bottom one. It's going to be the middle one for me just here. So now I know that, I will just attach the lens and you can, you really want it to be as central as you possibly can. And camera lenses, smartphone camera lenses, you can see there's usually a black bit, kind of iris if you like, in the middle. And you want to try and align the centre of your clip-on lens with the centre of your lens. Now let's, um, let's take a look at some subjects and see what this kaleidoscope lens is all about. My first subject is, well, pretty unimaginative in as much as it's the lens cap, the little bit of plastic that is meant to protect my kaleidoscope lens. But actually, it's a, it's a good size and it, it helps to illustrate what it is we're looking at here. And what you can see straight away is, well, what a kaleidoscopic lens does from our single lens cap just here. When we bring that under the lens, we can start to see six versions of it, or rather the original in the middle, and then five copies around the outside. Remember with these lenses, you can, with the kaleidoscope lenses, you can twist them. So you get a lovely effect like this. Uh, you can, I mean, maybe there's a good video thing you can play around with there. Maybe we'll come back to that another time, but for now I'm just about the stills. But what this enables me to do is to get uh, the composition as I want, two at the bottom, one at the top. I think that's kind of what I like. Now, other things to notice are what happens when you go closer and further away from your subject. So if I go further away, look how the individual, well, the copies of this get smaller and get further and further away. Whereas the closer that I get, the more they converge, the more they overlap. All right, 
So that is a, a lens cap. Um, I did go outside and picked a couple of, uh, of leaves from the, from the lawn and the, and the vegetation outside. Not much in the way of flowers at this time of year, but um, did get a little leaf just here. So just have a, another check of the lens and pop this leaf on. This is, this is quite lovely. It's not, it's not circular like the lens cap is. Not being circular, it creates a very different sort of composition in a way, but that's no, no bad thing. One thing that I do notice here, I don't know if you can make it out too, is what uh, photographers might call chromatic aberrations. And that's often to do with the, with the lenses. Notice how not on our central image here, our true image, but on the images around the outside, the colors just start to change towards the fringes. We're starting to see some oranges and some reds that are kind of aren't there, but they are uh, in my viewfinder here. And that is just because of the characteristics of the, of the lens. Sometimes in not always great quality lenses will you start to see that, but that gives it this a sense of analog. It gives it a sense of something other than a digital, uh, a digital camera or, or a smartphone. And I really, really like that kind of analogy, analogy effect. So just adjusting where this lens is, you see how I move it around and some bits become sharp and some bits less so. You can also just start to see the detail on these, on the, the veins, if you like, on the leaf quite nicely here. There we go, that's lovely. Now here, this leaf is a little bit larger, different color, a bit rounder. Wow, okay. My camera really likes this one. And I don't know if it's to do with just the slightly lighter shade of green perhaps, or if it's the detail on the leaf. Uh, it looks like there's some fur, fur, or hair or, or something on there. Is, is it called fur when it's on a leaf? I don't know. But that means that I'm getting a real sense of the detail on the, on the leaf. The central one is nice and sharp. But these ones around the outside of it take on a kind of dreamy quality. They aren't quite so sharp, but the center one is. So I really like that. Also, even though I've got my my desktop here is all white. There are still some shadows beneath just from the ambient light. And that, I think only adds to the effect actually. You, know, you could work hard to try and kill those shadows, but I rather like the shadows as they are. And what, what if I go to, go to an angle a little bit? Oh yes. Well, that's lovely actually. Uh, attacking the subject, not from the top down, but just ever so slightly from an angle creates a, a slightly different looking image as well. Right, it's been really fun to experiment with, with a kaleidoscope lens. How about we see how they came out? I'm really happy with all of the images I've captured with the kaleidoscopic lens. Uh, this one here, who, it, it really epitomizes a, a lot of what I like. And I'd summarize that with a kind of dreamy, a uh, ghost-like haunting quality where our center image is nice and sharp. We've got this kind of slightly faded, slightly out of focus images around the outside, really creative. I love how the shadows come into play here. And with this leaf in particular, it was a slightly rounder. I, I, I really like how it, how it fills the frame, the greens, the little bits of brown, the little wisps of, of hair or fur on there are all quite pleasing to the eye as well. So yeah, I think this brings together the, the, the analog feel very nicely. This leaf is a different shape, much more upright, but I think that's created a very different image. What is evident here, particularly from those leaves at the top are the slight variations in color, the browns and the yellows that aren't visible on the central one. These chromatic aberrations and I think that only adds interest. Yes, it's, some would call that an imperfection, but I really like the effect that that brings. And again, it's that same slightly misty, very analog. It's the kind of picture that you think might be taken manually with homemade lenses and a homemade camera, but no, this was 
on a digital smartphone camera with nothing more than a clip-on lens. Uh, it, it's fascinating, it really, really is to me. What I particularly like about this image and why I think it's successful is that I changed the angle from which I captured the leaf. I moved around to the front. So even though we've got this pentagonal precision, if you like, from the kaleidoscopic lens, because I've moved to the front, we've got a sense of perspective. We've got the stalk at the front. We've got the journey of the leaf as the veins go towards the back and the focus just falls off ever so slightly there as well. The, the shadows play a, a, a big part really of, of the image too. It's almost as though the shadows are pretending to be another copy of the leaf. So, so faded are those leaves in the background. But with all of the images that I took with the kaleidoscopic lens, they all have this dreamy analog quality that makes them really, really engaging, almost emotional to look at. That's what I really like about them.